Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like everyone to take their seat, if possible, so we can begin. Can you hear me with this? Can you hear me? Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand, if you're able to, and welcome our 2024 Honored Citizen, Omario Favorito. remain standing at now our honest citizen Mario Favorito. standing while Sadie Binder and Dorothy Smith of the Concord Girl Scouts lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. It's to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Nancy Crowley and on behalf of the Public Ceremonies and Celebration Committee and the Town of Concord, I welcome all of you to the 2024 Honored Citizen Ceremony. Each year since 1962, Concord has acknowledged the outstanding efforts of very dedicated citizens by naming them Concord's Honored Citizen. We come together today to recognize Mario Favorito as our Honored Citizen for 2024. At this time, I'm pleased to announce and introduce Chuck Clow from the Holy Family Parish in Concord, who will now offer the invocation. Good afternoon. Uh, to the select women and men who are present today and to the other town officials who have joined us and to friends of Mario and Karina, welcome. In particular, I wanna thank you, Mario, for allowing me to be part of the celebration of the wonderful gift you have been to our community. You call yourself a backbencher, but 50 years of service to our town belie that description. I've come to know Karina and Mario decades ago because they're both members of our former Lady Help of Christians Parish in West Concord, and I knew their children, Maria and Laura, because they had to suffer through my religious education classes to reach confirmation, <laughs> and they were both very patient. Then somewhere around the turn of the century, I received a call from Mario about a campaign the Concord Free Library was running, and if I remember right, part of it was to raise funds to fix the basement so Emerson's works and Dave, Henry David Thoreau's satchel would have a safe place to rest. But that was just the beginning of a long period in which Mario helped build one of Concord's great institutions. Now we should also be thankful that Mario took two important steps on the journey from his humble beginnings in Brooklyn to Concord. First was to make very a very important pit stop in Washington, D.C., one long enough to allow him to meet Karina, and the other was to fill out that little green volunteer card he, told him, he talks about a lot when he finally arrived in Concord. 
And conquered is all the better because both of those events took place. Now let us pray. Lord, you give us many gifts. You give the gift of life itself. You give us the gift, the gift of community and the ability to love one another. And finally, you give us the gift of your spirit, which allows us to know you better and teaches us to reach out and serve others. Lord, we thank you for the town of Concord, this wonderful place in which we are privileged to live. Constantly remind us that you have also chosen us to be stewards of this town, to care for it and care for its people. We pray that the timeliness spirit of Concord's revolutionary past will inspire all of us to forge a future filled with hope, unity, and boundless possibilities for all who call this historic place home. We ask you to bless those who have, we have elected or those who have been volunteered to serve in our town and official matters. We can read in today's bridge the names of those willing to run for public office and who are anxious to serve the people of Concord. We should see that their aspiration to serve, whether they are ultimately elected or not, is a constant inspiration to all of us, and we owe all of them thanks for stepping forward. Bless those who have been named honorable citizens in earlier years. They represent a pantheon which Mario joins today. We are all fragile, and we do not know what our purpose is when we have not thrown ourselves into a commitment to serve. When we have not committed ourselves to our neighbors and our community, help us appreciate these men and women who selflessly committed themselves to do something bigger than themselves. We owe them a lot. And bless all of us as we gather to celebrate Mario's contribution to our town. Mario, you are a beacon of light, and we are all privileged to know you. Let your heart be lifted by the love and appreciation of the many you have touched with your commitment to service. And may your days be filled with joy and fulfillment as you continue to inspire those around you. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Kraft. At this time, I'm going to read a little something about Mario. Mario Favorito was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and he lived in a very close and wonderful Italian-American community. He went to Catholic schools and to St. Francis College, where he received his BS degree in economics. He then went on to St. John's University Law School which also was in Brooklyn and received his law degree. He has many fond memories of visiting the New York Public Library as a high school student and developed a lifelong love of libraries while growing up in the city. <clears throat> After a varied legal career at various places in the Northeastern states, Mario and his wife Karina moved to West Concord in 1970 raised their family, and have lived there for almost 54 years. One of his law school professors sparked what would become Mario's passion for community service. He explained that as a member of the legal team, your job is going to be to give back to the community and help people. Mario, lis Mario listened. In fact, he says he had trouble saying no. Growing up in Brooklyn, he felt that one person couldn't do much to change or help improve things. However, he was pleasantly surprised to learn that one could volunteer and really make a difference in Concord. His first volunteer experience for the town was working to establish the Bus Transportation Committee. His childhood use of public transportation played a very significant role in this year. The initial plan was to help those citizens who needed to get around town have free bus service. The transportation included also planning bus routes for the bicentennial events of 1775. This directly helped the thousands of visitors who came to Concord that day. He went on to serve on many other town boards and commissions, committees, including the planning board and the zoning board of appeals, he worked on the restoration project of the West Concord Depot building, as well as helped establish the historic district in West Concord. Mario's greatest service to the town is probably his work, 
serving the Concord Free Public Library as a trustee for more than 25 years. His thoughtful, diligent, and dedicated service relating to the numerous changes, improvements, and renovations through the years have helped the library become the great institution that it is in its 150th year. He has served as vice president, as treasurer of the library, and worked directly on the renovation of the Fowler Library in West Concord in 2011. His background as corporate law has been vital to his leadership and guidance. He finished writing the history of the last 50 years of the Concord Library last fall. It was published on October 1st, 2023, as part of the history of the Concord Free Public Library in honor of the library's 150th anniversary. Through all these years of volunteer service, those who have worked with him Note that he has been a tremendous role model, a team player, and a doer. His legal experience and financial judgment has helped guide many committees and the Concord Libraries over the years. Mario has been a very active, devoted to Concord citizen and the special town that we're all so fond of. In closing, we would like to thank Mario for his years and his dedicated commitment and service to the town. Congratulations on becoming Concord's On Citizen of the Year. At this time, I would like to present uh, Mario with the citation from the town of Concord. Um, and now I would like to ask Henry Dane, Chair of the Select Board, to come up and say a few words and present the Honored Citizen gift as well. Thank you. Mario, would you come up and stand with me, please? <coughs> yeah, right over here. Okay, good. So what I, what I want to do first is to thank the Public Ceremonies Committee for selecting such a lovely man to receive this honor, okay? It is not so much what you have done, it is how you have done it. And um, you see? Um, so, um, and it is a matter of not doing things as a matter of duty, but doing them with joy. Yes, I do. Yes. I enjoy, I enjoy what I do. Well, that's good. This is, so this is um, um, not to repeat history, but to interpret it in a way that makes sense to me. Uh, this is a man who grew up in a humble family in Brooklyn. His father was, worked for the phone company. His mother was a seamstress. His uncle was a butcher. He played stickball in the streets I of Brooklyn. He learned how to deal with bullies at the, pub, uh, the police, um, the police athletic league. Um, he, um, um, his uncle, the butcher, took him to Ebbetsfield the first season that Jackie Robinson played for the Duckland Rogers and said to him, Mario, this is very important. Yes, he did. Yes. Okay. He um, went to law school. He walked to law school <laughs> in the days when people walked to places. And it was St. John's Law School, which was formed by people because the prestigious law schools did not admit women, blacks, Jews, or Italians. <laughs> and he was admitted 
as he said, by the skin of his teeth. But after the first year, he got a scholarship as a member of the Law Review. Right? Yes, that's yes. good. OK, that. good. It's all true. It is all true, and it is all very important. After law school, he went to Washington to work for the Navy. And he was a civilian employee of the US Navy during the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. And he was essentially drafted to become a, a lieutenant commander in the Navy um, during the crisis because they felt if things fell apart, they needed somebody like him to hold things together. <laughs> come on, come on. So, but here's the really important thing about his judgment. He listened to his wife who told him, because they lived in an apartment house where many of the women who worked in the Russian embassy lived. And she told him that Khrushchev was never gonna launch missiles because of the children and the women in the apartment house were sending their, the Russian women were sending their children to school and they were in the basement at the laundromat washing their laundry. And so while all the rest of us were hiding under our desks, he was, you, he was calm, cool, and collected because he had a much better source of intelligence than, than the NSA. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, so then, when he came to um, when he came to Concord, um, when he came to Concord, he was approached by Paul Flynn, the de then town manager, and asked to serve on a committee because he had worked at uh, was it uh, uh, the aircraft company? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah the turbo trains, the, 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 pre the, the one, preceding. The, the Amtrak. That's right, and the ones that never got built. <laughs> and so he was asked, he was asked to um, serve on the transportation committee, and he came up some, for some wonderful ideas about, for instance, using idle school buses. Idle that school was bus? Phoebe's idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, at, and he gave her credit for it, and he said at that point, "I don't want to be, I don't want to be a chair of a committee. I'm a doer." Right? right? And he has spent the rest of his career in Concord doing. And he, he was amazed that a boy from Brooklyn could go and live in a community where he could volunteer to serve and to, um, to serve and that everybody could make a contribution. And so uh, he looked at that with a sense of amazement and wonder and mm -hmm. went forward. So I don't know a better person that we could have nominated uh, for, this, uh, for this honor, and I congratulate you, and we are conquered, one of heart. Congratulations, Thank Mario. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, think I, have a, I think I have a box to give you. Oh, okay. Thank you. And I think you're the right person. Okay, well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I mean, uh, you want to make a few me. remarks? Um, uh, I have a spot for you to make a remark. Okay. Yeah. All right, well. You have some more citations first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, shall I go sit? Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure he gets his due. He gets all his stuff. Um, so at this particular time, I'd like to introduce Senator Michael uh, Barrett, uh, who will come forward with his uh, state uh, Senate citation. Thank you, Nancy. Well, thank you very much. That that's, was a, quite a colloquy <laughs> that Henry and Mario had treated us to. Uh, very impressive. Um, Henry said something that uh, uh, rings a bell. He said that uh, Mario's being honored today not only for what he accomplished, but how he did it. I couldn't help but thinking of the old uh, Woody Allen line that um, 
Success in life depends 80% on showing up. And certainly Mario's done that. Now there is a version of the Woody Allen quote, almost certainly untrue, but I like it nevertheless. It goes 80% uh, of success in life is showing up and the remaining 20% has to do with what you do once you show up. And while Woody never said that so far as I can tell, it so fits Mario's performance today that I, I wanted to offer it up uh, anyhow. Mario um, show, has shown up, and uh, those of us who have been around a little bit, and I see many um, folks uh, roughly my age in the audience, know that uh, showing up isn't quite as easy as it looks. Uh, it requires uh, good health and a lot of luck, but it also requires steadfastness, which uh, manages to elude a lot of us as we get older. Mario's record is extraordinary for the fact that he has shown up and knew what he wanted to do with his time. I was struck, Mario, by the fact that you, among many other things, coordinated logistics for transportation for the 200th celebration of the beginning of the American Revolution in 1975. The reason that is so meaningful to me is that Representative Cataldo and I have spent a lot of time uh, trying to hustle up some money to help with the 250th celebration. And I can tell you, Mario, that we cited the complicated logistics that you faced in 1975 as the grounds for the pitch that we made for 2025. What you faced then was daunting, was very challenging. We're talking about uh, President Jerry Ford's visit to Concord, among many, many other visitors. And uh, I can tell you that as recently as last month in making an argument to the Massachusetts State Senate for some kind of funding that would help this town uh, cope with what it's going to confront in 2025, I cited your experience almost 50 years ago. So thank you for staying the course, for showing up and knowing what to do with the time when you did. And with that, I want to present a citation from the Massachusetts State Senate. It's shorter than my preamble. <laughs> and it says, uh, be it known, sure. <laughs> Come on over here and get this uh, official looking document. <laughs> Be it known that the Massachusetts State Senate extends its congratulation to O Mario Favorito in recognition of your commitment to community, stretching back to Concord's celebration in 1975 of the 200th anniversary of its role in the birthing of, the, of American independence and extending right up to the present, an amazing record of constancy on behalf of a community that you love. Thank you. Congratulations, Mario. Thank you, very much. Thank you. you should stay here for the last time and you're going to be next. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you stay here? Uh, well, you can stand if you want. Okay. Um, so at this time, I'm going to introduce Simon Cataldo with his uh, wonderful son, Bo, who has joined us today. All right. Mario, this, this, will, this will be brief. And that reflects only a lack of babysitters in the town of Concord and not <laughs> the quality of your service to this town. Um, this is a ceremony worth having. Uh, I'll, I'll echo the uh, gratitude to the Public Ceremonies Committee. Uh, every time I come in here, the first thing I look at 
uh, are those names. And congratulations for joining a group that is very well represented here today, I think, in recognition of the fact of how important uh, this, this, honor, this honor is. Um, I'm here to present to you on behalf of uh, me and uh, Representative Carmen Gentile uh, this House citation. Um, and I hope that uh, you're mindful of the fact that your contributions to Concord uh, have multi-generational effect. Uh, so. Uh, Mario, in recognition of your 2024 Honored Citizen Award, amidst decades of service to the town of Concord, the entire membership of the House expresses to you its gratitude and, your hope for con and our hope for continued success. Mario, I have driven by, walked by, or biked by your house thousands and thousands of times. I grew up on North Branch Road, so like a nine iron or two uh, from there. And uh, from now on, every time I uh, walk by or bike by, I'll be thinking of you and everything you've done for this town. So yeah, congratulations. Thank you. thank you very much. So at this time, Mario would like to share some uh, remarks with all of you. <laughs> well, pretty much everything's been said, so, so I'll be brief. Um, uh, and I'll sort of wander around a little bit. When we were doing the work for the bicentennial and the transportation, we had the Secret Service come in because President Ford was going to be in there. And our group met in the basement of the post office. And two things that the Secret Service wanted to know is, what's the fastest way from the bridge to the emergency room at Emerson Hospital, number one? <laughs> and then they asked what was going to go on. And we said, we had Minutemen. And they fired their guns. You mean they have guns? <laughs> so we went, we went on from there. We finally got it, got it through. As it, as it turned out, uh, my wife had our children all dressed up. They were going to see the president coming through town and with Margaret Heckler with her red coat. And as they were at the bridge, a group of people came wandering and fording the river. And the Secret Service put President Ford and Margaret Heckler in the limo and spirited them out of town. And our poor kids, all they saw was Margaret Heckler's red coat <laughs> disappearing. So it was a lot of work, but you know, th things happen, and you just have to kind of run, run with it. Uh, uh, you know about the green cards. I filled out a green card, ended up with helping Phoebe and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, but I'd like to just mention a little bit about the library or libraries or books. I went to a, a Catholic grammar school, and uh, they had a library, which was a couple of bookcases and some books in a converted classroom. Um, and they had a lot of stuff in there. I went to the section having to do with adventure. And I found a book called The Tattooed Man. And The Tattooed Man was written by Howard Pease. And The Tattooed Man was about a young man on a tramp steamer named Araby who was sailing from San Francisco to Genoa via the Panama Canal. Well, reading this book, The Tattooed Man, was more interesting to a schoolboy than reading the lives of the saints. So I never got to that part of the library. <laughs> uh, my neighborhood had a Cargany, Cargany, Carnegie Library, which had a vaulted ceiling. And I 
love to sit in there and, and read. So it, reading, it drew me to various places far and wide. And of course, one of the places far and wide was the New York Public Library. And with 10 cents, two nickels, round trip, I could go to the New York Public Library from Brooklyn. And I sat in the Rose reading room and writing my notes longhand. Um, I don't know if you know the Rose Library, but it's, it's two square blocks of beautiful space. Um, so I don't know whether or not it made me a better writer, but I wrote my notes in longhand. And well, of course, a thousand years ago, there were no typewriters were, and laptops were scarce. Um, so I'm reminded every once in a while when I'm sitting in the main reference room where Doris Kearns Goodwin wrote the Fitzgeralds and the Kennedys in, in longhand, how nice it is to sit in a beautiful room thinking and writing. You don't write Pulitzer Prize winners, but you're right. So let me uh, talk just a little bit about libraries. A couple of years ago, well, more than a couple of years ago, uh, I was invited by two of the library trustees to become a trustee of the library. Um, and I said yes, because I love libraries. It was like I had died and gone to heaven. You know, uh, you've heard that I wrote a history of the last 50 years uh, of the library. And it, as I writing it, um, it brought back a lot of memories. And one of the things that was clear in writing it is, in all the work that the trustees have done, we sure were busy. But more importantly, no library can exist without staff. We have wonderful staff, and we have benefactors who contribute to the library. So I had and do have great appreciation, not only for what libraries do, what libraries are, but for people that support libraries. Over the years, as you've heard, I've been a, on a number of town committees, uh, ad hoc committees. I had trouble saying no when asked to do something for the town. It's a problem I have. Uh, upon completing my service on the Board of Appeals, there was a little thank you ceremony for those who were finishing their terms on various committees. In speaking then with a select board member, Annabelle Shepard, who's, who's gone, unfortunately, but she reminded me to cherish the moment because she said, tomorrow others will succeed you and no one will remember your name. Today is the only instance I can remember where Annabelle was not correct. <laughs> Thank you very much. At, th at this particular point, uh, we would like to acknowledge the honored citizens who have passed away since our last ceremony in 2023. So please join me in honoring them with a moment of silence. The public ceremony and celebration committee would also like to expend, extend a special uh, um, gratitude to our 2024 honest citizen, Mario, the Concord Independent Battery, the Concord Minutemen, the Concord Girl Scouts, the Middlesex 4-H and Drum Corps, our elected officials, and everyone here today taking part. 
At this time, also, I would like to ask the past honored citizens that are here today to please stand. At this time, uh, Deacon Clow will give the benediction. Let us pray. Lord, today our nation faces difficult situations and divisions, but we have faced many difficult and divisive times in the past. Let us use the example of Mario's generosity and spirit of giving to help us build our love of country and our patriotism to rise up in all of us. Mario's presence reminds us to never forget our forefathers came from many different lands, but together they found a nation based on upon moral and political ideas, such as all people are created equal, government by the people and for the people, and liberty and justice for all. We're blessed to be a society that is large and diverse, and sometimes we struggle to understand each other. But as long as we all love our country, we can enjoy a certain level of political trust. We thank you for bringing Karina and Mario to Concord and for elevating them as examples of true citizenship, where our role is not simply to take advantage of the freedoms we possess, but to use those freedoms in service of others. Lord, we ask that remind, we ask you to remind those who have not taken the opportunity to service their neighbors through the many committees which serve the town's needs and who have not filled out today's little green volunteer cards. You have no idea the pleasures and meaningfulness of life and the fun you are missing by not stepping forward. Remember, America is more than a plot of land because of people like Mario. It is a continuing experiment in the power of ideas to bring human beings together. And let us never forget this. Amen. This concludes our program. If you've not had a chance to sign the guest book, please make sure that you do before leaving. Also, please enjoy the many refreshments. And once again, thank you all for being here today. And congratulations, Mario. There will be a receiving line over onto the right, so everybody will get a chance to, um, to greet him and say hello. Thank you all for coming.